I've been a psychologist from sea to shining sea, and recently I've been taking on some life coach clients. Here's what you need to know if you're seeking out a professional for some guidance or support. The first difference between a psychologist and a life coach is their area of focus. Human behavior or performance is generally thought of as being on a spectrum. So on one end, there's illness and psychopathology, and that's based on the medical model, which classifies behavior as adaptive or maladaptive. In this case, we're talking about maladaptive behaviors on one end of the spectrum. So mental illness, mental health, or mental health disorder, behavioral health problem, refers to a wide range of conditions and it can affect an individual's thoughts, feelings, moods, behaviors, and there's typically some distress associated with those things. There is generally impairment in one or more areas of their life, things like work, school, daily activities, or their relationships. Psychologists focus on things on this end of the spectrum, and they work to determine a diagnosis, and this is important for the next difference, but for now, let's just say, on the spectrum of human behavior, psychologists are working on the illness end of the spectrum. Now in the middle here is what we call homeostasis. So it's like a neutral state. You are not in optimal health or optimal performance and you're not in pathology or illness. So you're somewhere in the middle. The other end of the psychological spectrum over here, that would be optimization. Sometimes it's called obtaining a state of happiness or self-actualization or peak performance is where life coaches focus. And the definitions here in the middle and in this optimization end of the spectrum are not universally defined. So there's many types of coaches now working in this space and there's wide variability in terms of what is going to go on in your coaching sessions. What can you expect in your coaching sessions and how does that compare to what you can expect in a session with a psychologist? So more of a clinical session. Both types of sessions ideally start with an evaluation of your current state and a discussion of what your goals are for each of the types of sessions. Since a life coach focuses on non-clinical performance, the session is gonna focus on how to move you forward toward your goals. And hopefully the advice and guidance that they provide has some evidence behind it. However, since the education and certification requirements for a life coach are not standardized, it's safe to expect a wide variety of variability in terms of a specific coach's ability to read and evaluate research for a specific recommendation. Their recommendations can come from personal or professional experience. It can come from anecdotal evidence or books or even a personal belief system. A session with a psychologist will focus first on the assessment and diagnosis of the mental health problem. And then psychologists will use that diagnosis to select an evidence-based treatment for that individual diagnosis. Although some of therapy is an art form, a highly qualified PhD level psychologist is trained in reading and evaluating the scientific literature and applying standard evidence-based practices to facilitate healing or return to this normative functioning, this homeostatic state that we talked about in the middle of that spectrum. An evidence-based technique is a treatment or intervention that's been tested and evaluated through scientific research and has been shown to be effective for the particular condition in a large enough set of people that we can make generalizations about the larger population. In a way, psychologists have a predetermined target for all of their clients, a return to this normative state or a return to a state free of illness. That means that you no longer meet the criteria for a behavioral health diagnosis. When you get to that state, you are no longer in need of a psychologist, which is why some medical insurance companies no longer cover mental health treatment after you no longer have a mental health diagnosis. This brings us to the third difference between a psychologist and a life coach. This wellness area over here is not currently considered a medical necessity. 
If it's not medical treatment, medical insurance won't cover it for the most part. If you know of an insurance company that does cover this type of coaching, please leave it in the comment section down below. Although some organizations do have in-house coaches, for example, the military has performance coaches, but for the most part, there's a substantial cost difference between seeking out coaching services and seeking out behavioral health services from a psychologist. The primary difference in the coverage really revolves around the fact that one of them is classified as a medical procedure and the other one is not. As you can imagine, since behavioral health disorders are considered medical problems, psychologists are considered medical providers. And with that comes specific expectations around education and training associated with being a psychologist. And those are currently absent in the coaching space. So far, I've been using this general term psychologist, but what I'm actually referring to are clinical psychologists. There are several types of psychologists that are not medical providers, people like experimental psychologists, social psychologists, cognitive psychologists, but clinical psychologists are the ones that you would typically associate with therapy, a couch, asking you how that makes you feel. These folks will have a graduate level doctoral degree. For example, I have a PhD and they completed some type of residency or what's called a pre-doctoral internship. Those usually go on for a year or two and that is supervised practice where you're required to have over 2000 hours of supervised experience. In total, individuals with a PhD in clinical psychology complete a minimum of five additional years after a four-year degree. And according to the American Psychological Association, it takes an average of seven years to complete this type of study. Being a life coach doesn't have a specific degree requirement and there's no standardized degree or training that serves as a prerequisite for becoming a life coach. Even though there's no universal education, certification, or licensing requirements for becoming a life coach, many life coaches choose to pursue training or certification to enhance their skills and credibility with clients, whereas psychologists rely on their credentials. Credentialing is the licensing process that dictates who is allowed to legally and ethically call themselves a psychologist and who can call themselves a life coach. Just like medical doctors, psychologists are required to be licensed by a specific state or territory here in the United States in order to be able to practice. And beyond the specific education requirements that we just talked about, there is also a national licensing exam that is run by the American Psychological Association, as well as additional state tests. And those tests focus on laws or regulations governing clinical practice in a specific state. So at a minimum, you know that a licensed clinical psychologist has completed a specific course of study, they've completed a minimum number of supervised hours, and they've gone through a state licensing body that's confirmed that they are cleared to practice. There are no national or state credentialing bodies for life coaches, although there are several independent credentialing bodies that provide additional forms of qualifications for someone who wishes to work as a life coach. The International Coaching Federation, or the ICF, is one of the largest and most well-known coaching organizations, and it offers several levels of coaching certification depending on your specific training and how many hours of coaching experience you have. But it's important to note that this is just one of many organizations that provides certification. There is no centralized body or centralized certification process. And this can pose an issue when you're you're enforcing things like an ethical standard for working with clients. The American Psychological Association has a clearly defined ethical standard for all psychologists regarding things like informed consent, confidentiality, and dual relationships. Ethical standards of practice also include doing what's best for the client, maintaining professional confidence through continued education, things like transparency, fairness, impartiality in practice, just to name a few. 
Some certifying bodies for life coaches also have ethical standards, but continuing with our theme of having a somewhat fragmented system, there is also a lot of variability in the ethical standard. So should you seek out the services of a psychologist or a life coach? As with many things in life, it depends. The main difference between clinical psychologists and life coaches is that clinical psychologists are trained healthcare professionals who diagnose and treat mental health disorders, while life coaches help individuals set and achieve personal or professional goals. If you're dealing with things like depression, anxiety, disordered eating, seek the services of a psychologist. If you're not quite sure if you're having a mental health problem, my recommendation is still to seek the services of a mental health professional. One of the differences we discussed is that a psychologist first works to assess the problem, and they might tell you, hey, you're having a really normative reaction to a particularly scary situation or an abnormal situation. And in fact, about a third of the clients that I see within my clinical psychology practice actually fall within this category category. Just a little break for a public service announcement. It is totally normal to experience changes in mood. You may experience things like happiness or sadness or even fear. Those are all universal situations and it's totally normal to feel your feelings. Having feelings in and of themselves is not an indication that something is wrong. You are just human. Okay, we determined that you are indeed human, but you don't know if you can answer one more work email, or you've been on and off your calorie tracking like me, or you've been obsessing over the script that you've been working on, looking at the differences between a psychologist and a life coach. All of these things are great to explore with a life coach. The whole process feels a lot less clinical. There's a lot more chill vibes. And for those looking for some general guidance or for those looking to move from good to great, this might be a good solution. One of the recommendations my performance coach recommended to me and I recommend to almost everyone I work with, regardless of whether I'm seeing them in the clinical space or as a life coach, is to have some sort of way to manually capture your thoughts or action items which is why so many of my videos here on YouTube focus on manual planning systems or notebooks. If you're interested in checking out one of those reviews, you can click on the link here. There are different types of psychologists that don't work. There are different types of psychologists 